All right, guys, part two um, of the programming interview video. This is just going to be talking about the interview. If you're coming straight to this part, please, um, it's probably going to make more sense if you watch, watch part one first. Um, and if you just came from part one, yeah, let's just continue. All right, so you just executed the interview search, and hopefully at this point, the interview was landed to some extent, some kind of interview. And we're going to just talk about in this video a general but not specific flow to what you can expect for this whole process. All right, so let's just do it. Um, the first one is going to be um, a screen on a phone or a phone screen, if you will. And this one's um, usually pretty easy and let's see, usually conducted by HR or a recruiter. So. A phone screen is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be a short 15 to 30 minute call to make sure you're not an asshole. So this is um, pretty self-explanatory, just getting a feel for what you're like as a person, um, seeing what you enjoy doing, um, getting a feel for where you've worked, where you went to school, what kind of things you're into. It's going to be a short 15 minute call, but it's just to make sure um, you're, not a, you're not a jerk. All right. So just be on your best behavior, do a little research about the company itself. And this, this is the easy part. All right, guys. So let's just move on to step two and getting past the phone screen is not so bad unless you're an incredible jerk, in which case maybe you have to work on that first. All right. All right. If the phone screen is all good, uh, you'll be invited to have a technical phone interview with probably um, another engineer and first thing to know is this is when it starts getting a little more serious so this is going to probably be 45 to 60 minutes long conducted on Google Docs for some coding and um, what is the purpose of a technical phone interview um, so pretty much this is the first step um, the first step to really vet you in your skills so many times <clears throat> As you may know, people tend to inflate themselves on their resume or like talk up a lot of game, but maybe don't have the skills to back it up. So this is starting to screen you based on everything you said in your resume and making sure you can do what you say you can do. So this is the company's filtering process to make sure you're okay. So this is to vet you. So um, this, <clears throat> This is going to be pretty serious and you should do a lot of prep for these. So prep, um, I'm not going to get into the details of the prep, but preparing for technical phone interviews means practicing and um, like writing out solutions to various problems in a kind of stressful environment, if you will, and making sure you're able to talk and work through those problems and assess how you're doing and how you can make your solutions better. So. Um, usually it could be one big problem. Um, uh, I know Google does like a one easy problem followed by uh, one harder problem. Um, so whatever they might do to vet your skills as a developer, this should be taken very seriously. So that's the technical phone interview and let's move on from there. So if everything's good um, from the phone screen and the technical phone interview, this is when you'll probably be invited to an on-site interview where they'll probably fly you out to they'll probably fly you out to some of their headquarters to conduct real on-site interviews and meet real people. So this is the last, but last, but also probably hardest part of the, getting the job and most of the decision based on whether or not you get it or not relies on step three, okay? So everything that happens in this step is going to determine if you get it or not. So let's just kind of talk about what this may or may not, <clears throat> sorry, entail. Um, you'll probably go through four to five interviews with various people, not only engineers. Um, so this will take either half a day or a full day. I've seen, you know, maybe only three interviews that's on the low side going up to like 
five, six interviews for the whole day. And you'll be meeting a lot of different people, not just engineers. So just be prepared for that and have a variety of questions ready because you'll be discussing a variety of topics. So one important note that I want to say here is that each interview is a um, culture fit. So they're trying to vet your skills still and make sure you have all the programming expertise you say you do. But every single interview is going to be considering how you're going to fit into their work environment. Um, culture fit is a kind of a weird word. I think you guys know the gist of it, but treat every interview as a culture fit. So they're going to be considering you too. So like every interview, whether it's coding or not, somebody's going to be like, okay, this guy is somebody I could or could not um, work with. So, but let's just go into some categories of interviews. So let's just go into a couple categories and these are little genres or themes to various interviews that you might go through on site. So first one, straight up more coding, more involved coding. Um, um, if you didn't do enough coding on the technical phone interview, you're probably asked to do even more coding um, on the on site. This could be whiteboarding problems, um, just writing on a whiteboard with someone. This could also be real pair programming with a computer and actually getting things working. So this must be kind of a new thing. Um, I interviewed a job not too long ago, maybe, I forget when it was, but we actually did some real programming. Like there was a computer there that had all this stuff open. You had to just sit, I had to sit with somebody, write through some code. You know, they were like, oh, I what's the syntax for that? Just Google it. It was almost like, um, real life situation if you will like googling for syntax you forget and actually getting something really working on a computer which is on like on a, when you whiteboard you talk through a solution and you don't really write like optimal syntax if you will but sometimes you do stuff like this where you gotta get something actually practically working which is cool so just be prepared so you're gonna have more coding interviews the tech doesn't stop at the technical phone screen so be prepared for additional um, coding so what's next um, there's also CS fundamentals which is kind of like stuff from school this might be a little less coding just purely asking questions asking you to explain words key concepts you know what does this word mean um, so this is just stuff you learn from school. Make sure you're still sharp on any classes with this because at any point in time, somebody could ask you some fundamental questions. All right, system architecture. Another common category that let's talk about is um, aside from the nitty gritty details, there's also software design and like kind of system level questions where an interviewer will ask you hypothetical questions of how to design maybe a integrated system with many moving parts like different features and dependencies or requirements so this part is kind of more of a design question and these are a little fun it's also this is not coding probably more whiteboarding or just discussion but this is designing a whole system and seeing how well you fare there it's kind of like taking um you know for you to solve problems making sure you can solve problems with a general mindset. All right. Um, what else is there? There's usually a lunch or casual interviews with non-engineers. And these are the ones that is this, are especially important for a culture fit. Everything is a culture fit, but if you interview anyone that is not an engineer, they're specifically trying to see what you're kind of like as a person. They might take you out to lunch or what have you, but um, just be wary of that so um, even things like happy hour um, I mean if you get invited to happy hour or anything kind of social it's very good but you should still always consider it as you're being interviewed and they're still considering you for a job so you could do everything well you go to happy hour you have like three beers and you just you know screw yourself over it's totally possible so um, just making note of that so those are a couple quick categories um, of what you might expect at the on-site interview. So 
just be prepared for these type of themes and you know think of some questions yourself revolving these categories all right let's move on uh, another important point to note uh, for the on-site interview is they can um, I've seen this happen before it's kind of bad but remember that no one's here to waste anyone's time if you're invited to an on-site interview and somehow they find that you're not going to be a fit after interview two or five it's likely that the interview process could terminate um, maybe halfway in the middle or something like this um, I mean this is okay this just a decision was made that you wouldn't be a good fit so just this this sucks, I know, but sometimes this can happen, and we'll just put that there. Um, so I touched upon this briefly before, but another really important point that I want to put down here is questions and compile a good set of questions for a variety of topics. So questions, questions, questions are especially inter important for the interview process. Um, questions about the company, questions about... Um, their technical capabilities and um, questions are pretty much a two-way street it's a really a way they're interviewing you obviously but questions are a way for you to interview the company which is almost equal which is equally important you want to know everything you can about that company and you do that through questions so, let me write down a couple points here Companies appreciate good questions. It shows that you actually took time to think about how you might fit in or you took time to think about them as a company. Um, so just take some time, brainstorm some good questions, and just be prepared with those before you go into the on-site. Um, the last point is kind of just a little, like, not really a trick, but just, just something to watch out for. Um, if everything goes well, someone... So this is kind of one way to tell if everything is going well, but at the end of your interview, if a boss or decision maker or what have you comes in to really try to sell you the position at the end, it means you've done something. If this is happening, you've done something good. So at the end of the whole process, if there's someone trying to sell you on the position or um, telling you why it's so good to work here, or whatever, whatever, that means you did something good. Um, if at the end of interviews it kind of ends, maybe not so good. So if at the end of your five or six interviews it kind of ends abruptly and you just kind of um, maybe move on, um, maybe it's not so good. Um, it depends how much they want to sell you. So just be on the lookout for this. And if you see this happening, it just means you're in good shape because they want to, con they want to do the best to convince you to work here. So... I guess just watch out for um, point G, but um, point H is a little sad. So, all right, guys, um, that's kind of all I had um, for the actual interview process themselves, going from screen to technical phone interview to on-site interviews. Um, and kind of giving a rough guideline of what an on-site interview may be like once you actually get there and what to expect. Um, there's other small parts of this process, including like follow-up negotiation um, that you, I think you can do some more research about. And furthermore, there's also a whole realm of interview questions, just like preparing for them, what type of questions you should be um, prepared for and practice on your own. Um, that's kind of work that you should do on your own. Um, again, I would recommend this book, which is a great book for all this stuff we covered plus practice stuff. So yeah, check out this book if you're in this process because if you're watching this video and you're into software at all, you will go through this process many times over. And you think you'll just do it once and get a job but the moment you know you leave that job and you're trying to find some other opportunities, this whole thing starts up again. You know, like there's it all starts up again. So just pay attention to this because it's all really important. So I'll post up this link in the YouTube video. I hope um, this video is helpful if, for anyone going through this process. And see everyone next time.
All right.